You see them skies right there? A little bit sunny, a little bit cloudy, so I come prepared today. I gotta make sure my banana's strapped on good. I don't wanna lose my banana. I went fishing with a guy not too long ago, and he said it's bad luck to have a banana on board. And I guess that's just a myth that fishermen have. You don't want a banana on your boat when you're fishing, bring it bad luck. Well, let me show you something. I strapped me a banana to my trolling motor. So we're gonna see if that banana right there bring me bad luck today. I stepped on them this morning and broke them. Since I got in the boat, I stepped on my sunglasses this morning. So I don't know if it has anything to do, that banana had anything to do with it or not. And I don't know where that other eyeball went. Now, I'm gonna show you the way I got set up today. I'm using 12 pound test mono. And it's clear, Berkeley. And I just got one little split shot there. I think these fish are gonna be in a real aggressive feeding mood today. So I think they'll come up and get them. This is just a little bitty split shot. Now, I mean, not much bigger than a BB. And I'm gonna put it about 18, 12 to 18 inches right above that hook right there. Let's put one of these, one of these minnows on down here, see what happens. See that foam right there? When you first put those minnows in there, they discreet uh, ammonias and that type of thing. And that's what that foam is right there. But they got some stuff right here that you can use. It's called, it's called uh, Slender Cat Signature Blend bait tank to your foamer but what this does it, it see let me show you right here. see all that foam on there see instantly see there and from what i understand you don't want the foam in there if you don't have to because it, it damages your manner somehow or another i mean i don't get into all that i just go fishing so anyway i'm going to show you some of these minnows that we've got we've got some good minnows now this right here i've got two different kinds of minnows in there this right here is a thread fin shad and you can tell by my hand, it's probably about five inches long. Now that's a thread fin. I'm gonna put him back in there. We got them in there. And we've got some gizzard shad in there. Let me see if I can find a gizzard over oh, right here. We got some gizzard shad. Now I caught, I got mostly big bait. I have a, a little bit of a small bait, but now this right here, see that, that's a gizzard shad and that's a big one, but that ain't nothing to these fish out here we fishing for. They'll eat one of them in the heartbeat. I throw it out there. And right now, basically, I'm almost free line, and I got that little weight on there, but that little weight ain't taking that, uh, it ain't taking that, 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 that minnow down to the bottom. It's just taking it down under the surface about a foot or two foot. So these fish are gonna come up from underneath and run them up to the surface and grab them. Oh, he's after, he's after, he's after right here. He might have got it. He's on here, y'all. He is on here. There he is. He's a big one too. Oh, Lordy mercy. Just got here. Is this gonna be a netter? He pulling drag, look here. <laughs> oh, that's a good fish. Oh my gosh, look what a, Lordy mercy, look here, what a fish. I just pulled up here on the spot. Look here, what a fish, Lord have mercy. How many netter net that boy? Lord, look here. Goodness. I mean, I just pulled up here. And don't y'all look at that water pretty fish. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, <laughs> I, I got that net already today because I figured out, uh oh, they're going to buy it today. I'll tell you why in just a minute where I felt like it going to buy it anyway. Boy, that little old hook right there. Everybody wants you big hooks. I tell you, you don't need a big hook. Boy, that little hook there's got him good. Nice, big, pretty Kentucky spotted bass here in Alabama. Caught him right out there too, right out there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this fish loose and then I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do today. Uh, going back down in there, big. Oh Lord, look, there he goes. We got a front coming in tomorrow, so I always like to fish fronts. Right before a front, not during the front, before a front. And that's what we're doing today, folks. Appreciate y'all tuning in. I'm Rocky Drake, Rocky Drake Outdoors. I mean, there's some big fish hanging out right in here. I've caught them in the past here, so I know there's some here. We sitting in nine foot of water right here. And let's well, see what the temperature is, 61.19. We got a, a point coming out right here. Big river's out there, and it's just a little cut back in here, right here. And that point comes out, and the water's down so low right now. You can see we got a little mound of, uh, looks like gravel over there. But right up there, it's, it shallows up a lot. So we're sitting right on the break right here so it comes out and it breaks off right here 
So I'm just fishing right on the edge of the break. Oh yes, oh yes. This is a good one here, y'all. I was just drifting down across this point. What is this? Oh my gosh, another good one. I caught that one right here. Oh, look at him pull now. Yes, 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 good one, good one, another good one. Now, let's get him up here. Well, that banana, so far, it ain't bother me a bit. <laughs> Look at here. Oh, yes, that's a nice, another nice, another nice one, y'all, I'm telling you. They just ain't a prettier fish, other than a smallmouth, the one they spotted bass right here. Y'all look here. That's a good chunk right there. Yes, it is. Now, this is a Kentucky spot, even though we're here in Alabama. Of course, everybody knows got the little place on their tongue right there. See right there? Now, these right here will mix with smallmouth, and they're called mean mouths. And we have a lot of them around here. We may end up catching one of them today. But right there is a pretty fish. It sure is. Turn it loose. Tell it, there's a banana right there, y'all. See right there? So much for the banana. Yeah. I know folks don't even want you to eat a banana before you go fishing with them. Because they, they feel like that banana is down in your belly. They want you to, you know, if you eat a banana, they want you to wait a day or two before you, before you come fishing with them. <laughs> see that minute right there? See how he's wiggling down in there? Hope y'all see that maybe. See how he's flashing around? That's what excites these fish. Them fish, these predator fish, they can, they can sense this uh them vibes off of, off that bait when it's doing that it puts vibes out in the water and it, they key in on it that's why you want a really really active flippy floppy minnow i'm gonna show y'all how clear this water is see that pole right there i'm gonna poke it down in there look here you can see that pole i can see it like looks like about four foot down in that water right there sure is. so there there he is right there golly god look at that <laughs> well <laughs> I getting ready to tell you. Look at boy, toy that man up right there. I was getting ready to a little old spotted bass. Bless his heart. Look at there. Now sometimes what I'll do is I'll just let it come by the boat like it's doing right now and just walk to the back of the boat. Just like that little fish I just caught. He was just right here on the boat. Now the way I'm fishing right now, I've got my finger on the line my ma with my bail open. So I can let line out like that. Look at there, y'all. Payday. Mmm, that's good stuff. I keep eyeballing that bank over here. Mm-hmm. I just think that bank's gonna have some fish on it. I'll try not to smack while I'm eating. This reel right here is not a real expensive reel. I mean, you can spend a lot of money on reels. This reel here is not expensive, but it's a good reel. And it's a Johnny Morris reel. It's a Bass Pro Shop brand. This rod right here, it is a uh, medium heavy six foot nine and it's lightweight is what i like about it and it's real sensitive this is a duck at silverado uh i don't even know if they make these i thought i heard they're gonna quit making these and come out with something to replace them uh but it's a, it's a the cheaper version of a ducket rod and you see all the minor scales on there because i use it a whole lot oh i just seen my line do something so i'm watching my line there you don't see that bow in the line And if one grabs it, that bow's gonna straighten out. I mean, it's just all there is to it. Just, did y'all see that? Oh, this, oh, this is definitely a fish. This is definitely a fish right here. <laughs> I felt it on my finger. I'm gonna let him chew on it. I mean, we could catch a flat fish showing up big one right here now. He's still on there too. He's swimming up. Oh Lord, mercy, did y'all see that? There he is too. Let's see what this is. I don't think it's a real big one, but hey, it's a nice one. Hey, it's okay. We just fishing today. We got that banana up yonder. We're, we're gonna prove that banana. Mumbo jumbo don't make no difference. What we got here? Oh, they look like another spotted bass. Sure does. Sure does. Come on up in here, Miss Bot. Yep. No, hey, this is uh this might be a main mouth. I don't know. Let's look at him real quick. It's a good one though. Pretty fish. He's got him hooked right there. Oh Lord. Right there in the corner of the mouth with that little red hook. See. Use these little red hooks, it don't take much to get them hooked up good. 
not only that, it don't damage the fish. That small hook don't damage the fish as much as a big hook would as far as getting them out. See that? See how that just popped, just popped right out of there. Now, let's see. No, that's a spotted bass. I thought that might be a thought that might be a mean mouth. Let's just put it right back down in there. Oh Lord of mercy, y'all. There's that banana. See it right there? Mm-hmm. Banana. Look at that little frayed places on that line. Right from the whole If I caught a great big fish right now, it'd break me off. It would. I sure don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna retie it real quick. And I'm using these number two owner hooks today. They're mosquito hooks. Now these smaller hooks right here, you don't have to really of course I set the hook pretty hard, but you don't really have to. These are like they got little needle points and they got good barbs on them. And once you get that get that barb in that fish's mouth, he ain't coming off unless he breaks off or something like that. He ain't coming off that hook. So these are like I say number two hooks and uh, they're red. Now red, uh you know, I mean, I don't know if it helps or not, but they say that these red hooks represent some mena that has been wounded. You know, it looks like blood on them. I don't know about that. I know a lot of guys like to use real shiny chrome hooks, but I like to use these red hooks right here. Now, in my opinion, the way I like to fish, a polymer or not, polymer, ever how you want to pronounce it, depending on where you're from. And Sal, we call them polymer. You know, we slang it up a little bit, but anyway, Polymer knot is uh, the best knot to tie for the way I like to fish. And I'm gonna show you how to do that and I'll show you why it's such a good knot. Now see what you do is you run your line through the eye of that hook just like that. So see that right there, it goes in there one time. So, okay. And then what you do is you turn it back. It's real simple to do and it's quick. I like to do stuff quick when I'm fishing that way I can get back to fishing. Then you run it back through the eye of the hook. So the reason this knot is so good is you got the line doubled up in the eye of the hook. So instead of just a single line going, it's doubled up. So you got twice the strength on this knot right there. See, see that sliding up and down right there. And then what you do is you just bring it, or you just loop it around like that and just hold it like that right there. And then you got this little, little loop right here. And what you do is you just twist it back under there like that. So you got it basically like that right there see now what you got to do from here you got to take take this little loop right here and loop it back over the hook and before you cinch it down make sure that your line is up in the upper part of the loop of the eye in the hook right there you don't want it down in that little see that little edge right there where the hook comes together you get that knot down in there you're subject to break off pretty easy so then once you get it, so you can just do it like that and then just pull her tight, just like that. See that right there? Just make sure, see, it's in the upper part of the eye of the hook. And that's a polymer knot. All right, folks, just pulled up to another place here. This is Tennessee River right here, it's flowing this way. So we're coming in here, hitting this bank right here, going around this way. So I'm sure it's got some bait pushed up in this corner right here. And I've caught fish here before, but it's been a while since I fished here. And uh, so, let's pull up there and, and try, try right here. Yeah. There's that banana. Ooh, I seen something chasing bait right up there. Look, see it, see it, see it, see it right there. See right here, chasing bait right here too. See that? It's pulled up to the second place right here. I don't know what that is. We can find out. There's something chasing bait right there. And I've been give it to them. I've been give them what they want right here. Mm -hmm, sure am. Let's throw it right up there and see. Ooh, Lord, right in the right. I'm... Now, talking about bad luck. Uh huh. I didn't think I, I didn't think a banana was gonna bring me no bad luck, but it just did because I just caught a huge spotted bass and I didn't have record button mashed. Sorry, and uh, but I got him in my manor tank. Let's go take a look at him. Don't y'all look here what's spotted bass. Look, look at that. Look at that fatty. Look at that gut on that fish right there. I'm kind of on the fence about the banana after this right here, but uh, look at that, ain't that pretty? Let's turn her loose. And uh, I don't know about that banana yet. I don't know, I wish I'd had the cord button on, but I didn't. Well, what happened a while ago was I run out of battery, so I changed my battery. And right after I changed my battery, 
I got to bite and I've got to cut the record button back on. But that's okay, I had a nice body bass and that could be that bad luck contributed to that banana there. I know one thing, I've been real hungry. I've been eyeballing this banana right here for a while, strapped to that trolling motor. I came down here, Dad, and stopped and give me nothing to eat. I do that all the time. I'm in such a big hurry to get down here to go fishing. Folks, I appreciate y'all tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.